Hello there, I'm Leo Wardup for Kit Guru, and this case is the Inwin 707. I made a passing reference to this case when I was doing a review of the 703, which is the ATX tower. This is the E-ATX, the extended ATX version 707. Uh, I didn't give it, however, its full name, which is the uh, 707 Gaming Black. Uh, in fact, it's not really black in colour, it's more gunmetal grey to my mind, but still, but it's blackish. Um, there is an alternate model, which is the Silent White. Um, as far as I can see, the difference is that the black is perforated, it's got fans galore, um, whereas the white uh, has one less mount for a fan on the side and it also has sound deadening material. So it's not just a question of different colours, uh, there are actually two subtly different versions of the 707. Still, this is the full-on version. Um, the short story with the 707, it's EATX, so big. It's got lots of everything, so on the front, for example, behind this stealth door, we have three optical drive bays, um, we've got eight drive towers, and we've got uh, three case fans, two 140s at the front and 140 at the rear. And in a sense, that could be the end of the story. So it's a big case, you can put lots of stuff in it. And ordinarily I'll put a Core i7 or some such hardware inside it and we'd run some tests and that'd be that. But I thought, no, it's a big case, let's go to town. So if I just um, pull off the side panel, which is two thumb screws. Oh, by the by, when I turn the case back, once I've got these thumb screws out, there we go, not captive. Uh, the uh, side panel is uh, described as a uh, smoked um, I.e. it's not just purely uh, clear. So if I take off that side panel, and away comes that. And you can see inside, and behold the magnificence. Uh, we have a Gigabyte X99 uh, UD4 motherboard, um, a Core i7 Extreme 5960X uh, processor, a whole bunch of Corsair DDR4 memory, and three reference GTX 980 graphics cards. Um, so basically it's crammed for, oh what else we've got? We've got a, a Platinum uh, a 1200 watt power supply from Seasonic down the bottom. So a humongo gaming PC. The funny thing is that that motherboard is actually ATX, not E-ATX. So there's actually a fair amount of space below that bottom graphics card. Had we gone for the full-on uh, E-ATX setup, you uh, could theoretically put four graphics cards in, which I think we can agree would be completely overkill. So there we go. So that's an example of what you can do with a case uh, such as the Inwin 707. Um, if I just pull off the back panel, two more thumb screws. They seem to have about 87,000 turns to remove them. So this side panel has a mount for another case fan there, which as far as I can see is absent on the uh, 707 silent white version. But the actual panel is just plain steel. I mean, it's slightly flexy, very big. Um, as I say, the white version apparently has um, sound deadening material. I imagine it's that sort of self-adhesive bitumen type stuff. And there we have the back side of the motherboard. Now, the funny thing is that it's a large case. It looks quite swish. That front panel is very similar to the 703 that we saw, except it's obviously slightly larger. And as I say, it's got those three drive bays. Um, but it's not very sophisticated. So if I take out one of these um, drive caddies, for example, you can mount a hard drive, you just sort of slide those pins back, put the thing in, push the pins in, so tool free. So you can mount up to eight three and a half inch hard drives. If you want to mount an SSD or a two and a half inch drive, you have to use the same bay, but you use these mounting positions here. Funny thing is they only give you in the pack of screws and accessories, eight uh, screws suitable for an SSD, which obviously is enough for two drives. So they're clearly expecting you to use all these bays for a huge uh, three and a half inch hard drives and presumably you know, many terabytes of storage. Um, theoretically, you can remove these drive towers. Certainly the bottom one is referred to in the manual, this um, installation guide here, that you remove a screw there, a screw there, and a screw somewhere else. Um, three screws and you basically remove the tower and that gives you access so you can mount uh, fans or liquid cooler in the floor of the case. I have to confess, I failed. I attempted to remove it and I, I simply couldn't do it. I kept on uh, banging up against this uh, flange here. Um, and that's with the front, this uh, front panel one clips and it comes away, but the steel front of the case remains in place. Uh, so although I can see mounting screws for the um, drive towers, it's clearly in a sort of five and three configuration. Um, and as I said, the uh, installation guide refers to removing those three bays. Um, I couldn't do it. 
So uh, they're all in place. Now it didn't actually particularly slow me down because I have uh, at the back of the case that 140 case fan um, and at the front out of sight, um, although they are in the photos um, I put on Kit Guru, uh, there are two 140s at the front. So we have plenty of cooling. I've added in uh, a Corsair H100i 240 liquid cooler in the roof of the case um, and we're good to go. There are, however, some curiosities about the cooling in this case. So the two front fans, these um, stripy wires here are for the uh, front fans. They go to um, three pin uh, headers that go on the motherboard and that's all fine. The rear fan, on the other hand, is um, a four pin Molex connector. So you can't mount that to the motherboard. You have to mount it, you have to connect it to your power supply, which is a bit fiddly because the location means in actual fact, in this instance, the uh, wire sort of trails around and goes across the top of the top graphics card and I have to sort of connect to the power supply. So that's a bit of a bore. Uh, so drive bays theoretically removable, but in practice I found to be fixed. There is not, despite the enormous size, the amount of space on the rear of the motherboard tray, there is no SSD mount on the back of the um, motherboard. So you are using those drive bays whether you like it or not. Um, I am amazed they didn't see fit to put a couple of mounting points or a, 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 some sort of uh, clip or some such just to mount an SSD out of sight. But no, no joy, it's all in, those, uh, in that Tower of Eight. Um, the other thing is the business with the 240mm radiator in the top of the case. Here's the thing, you have a number of options if you come to um, add extra fans and cooling to this case. You can um, put a 120, 240 or 360 radiator in the roof of the case, but you can forget about using units of 140. So you can't have a 140, you can't have a 280. It's uh, to do with the width of the mounts, uh, which is essentially in two rows. Um, they've got plenty of space. I don't really see why it didn't uh, give you the option of mounting a 280 radiator, but you can't. So if you want one of those uh, Corsair H10 uh, IGTs that we uh, reviewed quite recently, you ain't gonna get it in there unless you start drilling holes yourself. Also, the um, the screws that go in the top, they sort of, uh, you can see in the photos that there are a dozen uh, rubber grommets, um, which uh, you get a whole bag of uh, fan mounting screws in the pack of goodies. So you can easily put a fan up, uh, screws go through the rubber grommets and there you go. If you're gonna mount a radiator, they, they refer in the, um, in the manual to, uh, a pack of metal metal grommets, they actually call them. In fact, they're metal washers, uh, so you have to use those to avoid pulling the screw straight through the rubber grommet. Um, so the language is slightly out of whack, but still. Uh, so mounting the 240 radiator on the roof, easy peasy. I would have liked the option of mounting a 280, but that was not to be. Uh, other cooling, there is a clip. I'll put my finger in place there where you can clip a fan to the rear of the drive tower. Uh, so obviously you have the two fans behind this front panel and then another fan behind the drive tower to suck air through. So if you're kind of going for server-esque storage, you're laughing, but um, I'm, I'm not so sure. But it's certainly doable. The uh, three optical drive bays are um, tool-free. You just uh, slip an optical drive in from the front, as you'll see I've done, uh, slide it in and then simply pop home uh, those pins and that holds it in place works very well easy peasy to do um, You've got a fair amount of space on the rear of the motherboard tray for cable management not acres Considering the colossal size they could have easily put another half inch in it wouldn't have made the case look any bigger however, I had no great difficulty in um, Feeding the cables relatively tidily and securing them there aren't as always there aren't enough tie down points There never are these cases you can see there are a few unused but the way I see it is give me 20, just give me as many as, as can be. The grommets are a little spaced out. Uh, there's nothing going on here, for example, which makes it a bit awkward feeding um, cables over the top of the motherboard. And um, this great big sort of opening here, which doesn't have a grommet around it. I mean, it, it's obviously for cable management. I, I'm, I'm sort of used, if I see an opening, I want it to have a grommet. It's quite peculiar. There's no real need for it though. It's, um, I don't know, I suppose it's just what I'm used to. But uh, cable management worked, cable routing worked. Uh, installing the hardware, as you can see, there's all the space you want. If you choose to remove the front panel, you have to pop these uh, red clips uh, and then off with the thing. Um, it's a bit annoying, however, because the uh, front IO ports on the top of the case, uh, the case, they're attached to the front panel, so you have to take it away along with all the cabling if you're gonna do anything in the front there. However, I doubt you will need to actually remove that front panel 
it, everything goes on inside the main um, the main chassis, the front you can really pretty much leave alone. Um, there is, uh, just turn it around here, we have the power button. Um, you would expect there to be a corresponding reset button here, but there's nothing that is not a reset button on the chassis for some reason. Not a big deal, just a bit surprised. Um, again, it's not through lack of space after all, is it? So that's that. Uh, I.O. on the top, Stealth Bay covers the three optical drives on the front, fans at the front, fan at the rear. Don't understand the reason for two headers on the front and yet a Molex on the rear. That to me is perverse. The idea there is no SSD bay, uh, what? I mean, why not? You could put easily two on there. The eight uh, drive bays look neat enough, easy enough to access. However, uh, the idea that you give enough screws for two SSDs or uh, laptop drives, I find a bit peculiar after all, how much does it cost to give you, uh, what would it be, four times eight, 32 screws? I mean, nothing at all. Uh, the, the inability of, my inability to remove that drive bay, um, I don't know what that's about, but um, uh, it's quite, quite peculiar. I mean, I, I did feel like a fool being unable to tug it out, but, but there we have it. Uh, so let's say it's partly down to me and partly down to an installation guy that wasn't quite as clear as I would have liked. Um, the top cooling, the idea you can't put a 280 radiator in the top. I mean, 420 would be a bit over the top, but a 280 or a 140 I, I don't really see that. Um, I don't want to put on an Extreme Edition, I don't want to put a 120. Uh, I would have liked the option of a 140 or a 280, but 240 does the trick. However, that takes us to the main thing, which is why on earth do you want an EATX case? Clearly, Inwin is saying, well, you want to put a big motherboard in. Fair enough, look at it. That is a big motherboard. However, it is an ATX motherboard. Uh, so uh, we're proving here you don't act. You can build a humongo gaming PC. You do not need an EATX motherboard to do that. Although of course many of the um, Intel Extreme Edition X99 boards are EATX rather than ATX. ATX quite clearly, on the other hand, gives you a load of hardware. The multiple drive bays says something about what they're expecting you to do with this case, i.e., huge amounts of storage. Fair enough. I'm not really sure how many drives you want to install in your case, but that's fine. And the pricing. Now the thing is, this case is just under ninety-five pounds. It's ninety-four ninety-five, and I really can't see what you're getting for your money, because putting those um, graphics cards in place. I mean, you obviously have to crank in the screws to uh, lock them down, and the back of the case was flexing like billio. It really is. I mean, all right, it's now all locked in place because I've got a pass by there and three graphics cards, but it really is quite flexy. The build quality is of that sort of standard which is solid enough but certainly not premium or luxury and I'm not really sure what you're getting for your £95 apart from a bit more space than the I think the um, 703 is £55 so 40 quid doesn't get you a massive amount. The thing is that the Inwin GR1 or Grown as we often refer to it uh, is only £90. Now the GR1 doesn't have this sleek front panel. It's got a kind of bulgy, lots of drive bay kind of thing going on. This, I, I like the look of the uh, 707 and indeed the 703. Um, but the GR1, to my mind, is as much case, if not more, and it's the same sort of money. Um, this is considerably younger model, uh, which kind of leads me to expect it, it may be not too revolutionary, but certainly an advance. And if I'm entirely honest, I'm not sure it is an advance. Um, if you look at the case in the front and you go, yep, I like that EATX, that'll do me, thank you very much. The detail, keep the detail. Then fair enough, no problem at all. Um, the thing is 95 pounds for an EATX case is relatively cheap uh, because they often go up to the thick end of 150. But so fair enough, it's a cheap, relatively cheap uh, EATX case. But I don't know, um, this has presumably been in the works for a while because the GR1 has been around for certainly a couple of years, possibly even three years. Um, I first saw it a long time ago. And it doesn't seem to me that uh, Inwin has been working their socks off doing a massive amount of development on the um, 707. But anyway, it's a pleasant, fairly cheap E-ATX case. It's got a pleasant front panel. I like the window. I'm not making the drive bays, the cooling options. They could have done better with us. But overall, it's perfectly reasonable. Um, and as you can see, by God, can you get a lot of hardware inside it. Um, 
it's been fun gaming with this one. Anyway, this is Leo Walder for Kit Guru, and this is the Inwin 707 Gaming Black.